Okay, so this is chapter P, section P.5, which is solving equations graphically, numerically, and algebraically. So this we're getting into um, more about quadratics, and we will review the multiple ways that you can solve quadratics. Okay, so the first example is solving by finding x-intercepts. So you can solve the graph, the equation, graphically. So this first example is using a graph. So you can see the picture that we use is from a graphing calculator. But remember, I'm just going to put a note up here. You can go to Desmos, either the app or online. Type in Desmos, type in the equation. Um, or you can use a calculator app like Calculate84. Oops. So there are lots of options for how you can get this graph. So if we're solving an equation graphically, um, we can find the location of the two spots where our graph hits the x-axis. So you can see that it hits at x equals negative 0.5 and x equals 2. Okay. So the other piece of this is sometimes it's good to review how could I solve this algebraically if I needed to. So we're going to also do this algebraically. So if I have 2x squared minus 3x minus 2, um, this is one that has a leading coefficient greater than 1. So we're going to um, factor by grouping. So I would multiply 2 and negative 2 and I get negative 4. And I would say what two numbers multiply to negative 4 but add to negative 3. And that would be a negative 4 and a 1. So I'm going to write this as 2x squared minus 4x plus 1x, or just x, minus 2 equals 0. Okay, so all I did was break up that middle term into the two terms here that are equivalent, negative 4x and x. Now I'm going to group. So I'm going to group the first two terms, group the last two terms, and we're going to pull out the greatest common factor. So in the first parentheses, I can pull out a 2 and an x, which leaves me with x minus 2. And then there's nothing I can pull out of the second parentheses, so I always just pull out a 1 if there's nothing I can take out. Okay, and then we group these two terms together, so this becomes 2x plus 1. And these are the same, so we put those together as x minus 2. So those are our factors. You could FOIL them out if you wanted to double check that it went back to equaling the original. And then we would solve each of these by setting them equal to 0. So we know that 2 times what plus 1 is going to equal 0. We'd subtract the 1, divide by 2, so x equals negative 1 half, and x equals positive 2. And you look over here. That is, in fact, correct. So we can solve using a graph. We can also solve using algebra. Okay. Our next um, thing, so a quadratic equation is one that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So this right here is standard form. We will get into more with quadratics a little bit later, but um, there's vertex form, there's standard form. So we want to talk about that. A, B, and C are real numbers. So that's going to, we're going to be useful when we do some of these solving problems here coming up. Okay, this one is solving by extracting square roots. So this you can see is not in standard form, but the thing, if you were looking at this right now, you should see, okay, I have a square on the left, and I know I can just undo a square by taking the square root. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side. So that would cancel out over here and would leave us with just 2x minus 1. The thing you have to remember is whenever we take the square root, so not if a square root is just in a problem already, but if we write it in there to help solve, that means that we have two answers that we have to account for. So we know that the square root of 9, we think of it as 3, but it needs to also be negative 3. So here we have plus or minus 3. So then we have two equations to solve. We have 2x minus 1 equals 3, and we have 2x minus 1 equals negative 3. So over here, 
we add the 1, so it'd be 2x equals 4, or x equals 2. Over here, we add the 1, 2x equals negative 2, or x equals negative 1. So that is solving by extracting square roots. The next thing is solving by completing the square. So we did this last year in Algebra 2. Um, so this is where if you have something, you can make it into a perfect square trinomial so that it factors into a binomial squared. Um, and then that allows us to, we could either solve using extracting square roots, um, and it allows you to simplify from there. So here's an example. So solve by completing the square. So the first thing is we are going to, we don't like a number with the 4. So I am going to divide everything here by 4. You can divide both sides by 4. That 0 is not going to change, though. So this would turn into x squared minus 5x plus 17, oops, 17 fourths equals 0. Okay, so that's our first step. Now, our next step is, and then the other, well, I could do this in one step. You can, you can kind of skip steps on these, but I'm going to do every little step for this. So now I'm going to, I'm going to leave a space after the minus 5x, and I'm actually going to get the, the 17 fourths to the other side. So this is going to become negative 17 fourths, and we can do that. Okay, and then I'm leaving a space here because we need to put something in this box that we're also going to add to the other side. Okay, so the number that goes in the box, and some of you might remember this, is we take half of the b value, which in this case is negative 5. So we take negative 5 and cut it in half, and then we square it. So if we square negative 5 over 2, we get 25 fourths. Okay, and then over here, we can also put 25 fourths because we have to balance our equation. So then the last step here is we get x minus, so it's going to be half of whatever, so it's basically this term right here goes right, x minus 5 over 2 squared, that's what this factors to, is equal to, and then if we add, Negative 17 fourths plus 25 fourths, we get 2. And then this becomes like the problem we just saw on the last slide. So we can square root both sides. So I get x minus 5 over 2 equals plus or minus square root of 2. Square root of 2 is not a nice perfect square, so I'm going to just leave it like that. So my two answers here would be x equals, and then we're going to get this negative 5 halves over to the other side. So it would be 5 over 2 plus square root of 2 and 5 over 2 minus square root of 2. Oops. So those are our answers for that. Okay? Okay, the next thing to remind you of is the quadratic formula. So here it is. You can write it down in your notes. You can go look up the song that helps you remember it. Um, so these A, B, and C are coming from that standard form of the quadratic formula, for quadratic equation again. Okay, so example four is let's solve this using the quadratic formula. So First thing I like to do is make a little list to myself about what is A, B, and C. So A is 2, B is 3, C is negative 5. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. So X equals negative B. So negative 3 plus or minus the square root of B squared. So 3 squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times a. Okay, so then we simplify. So this would be negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, so let's see, this is going to be 9 
minus, so this would be negative 5 times 4 would be negative 20 times 2, so it would be negative 40. So we're going to have 49 inside over 4. So the nice thing about this example is that 49 is a perfect square. So we know that this is going to be negative 3 plus or minus 7 over 4. So this is going to give us the two answers. So negative 3 plus 7 would be um, 4 divided by 4 is 1. And then negative 3 minus 7 would be negative 10 over 4, negative 10 fourths, or negative 5 halves. So those are our answers for that one. If you, um, when you're doing these problems, be really careful about what the directions say. So if it wants an exact answer, you can sometimes, especially if that number is not a perfect square, you can leave it um, at this step right here. If it wants a simple, or if it wants an approximation, it usually tells you what number to round to. So if you look at the written notes, um, the quadratic formula example I did in the written notes does not come out to be um, perfect numbers like this one does. So that's another example for you. Okay, so just kind of to recap, solving equations algebraically, there's four ways. Factoring, we did factoring on the first example where we also did by graphing. Extracting square roots is where you're going to start by um, square rooting both sides and solving that way. Completing the square allows us to use extracting square roots, and then we can also use the quadratic formula. So all of these can be used to solve quadratics. Okay, so the last example um, kind of takes a turn from the whole quadratic thing, and it's talking about solving by finding intersections. So what we can do on graphing calculator or even on Desmos is you can um, type in this. So we can actually break up this one equation into two separate equations. So we can write this as y equals negative 2 absolute value of x minus 2. And then we can write this as y equals negative 3. And then if you're graphing them on the graphing calculator, um, so if we go to, if you're using a TI-84 or if you're using the Calculate 84 app, you can go to second trace and then you go down to five where it says intersect and make sure you get both intersection points so you'll notice here there's two spots where it intersects so you're going to have to do that twice um you can also another thing you can do is you can use the table feature on your calculator so there's you can always do um second graph to get to the table to find approximate values. So second graph gets you to the table. So those are all features you can use. You can also, if you type it into Desmos, you can actually just click on those two locations and find out the exact intersection point without having to do the second trace intersect. Okay, so if there are any questions, just let me know.